I always say, when you do business, man, don't go in the store hungry. There's a, don't go in the store hungry. Just like yeah. they say, you don't ever go to the grocery store hungry. You just start buying bullshit. Yeah, of course. You don't go to no business deal needy and desperate because they can see it in you. You did? Yeah, yeah, they can see true. when you're starving. Yeah, sure. Dude, I, when I used to do business deals out here, man, I, I, I was hustling. So I, I came in with the fresh cars, the fresh gear. So I had the same shit that they had. So I wasn't taking no janky little bullshit yeah. deal. I know how to go out here and get it in the mud. Mm -hmm. So when they throw some nigga trinkets at me, I'm cool. I done been around the world four or five million, I mean four or five times. I done been everywhere. I done drove every car, been with every bad broad. I done wrote books about the game. So they're not giving me nothing that I ain't seen. Yes, right. So I can say, hey, look, what are you going to do for all of us as a group? What are you going to do for my folks? Uh, yeah. Because you, I'm, I'm not trying to sit up there cock and kiki in with your ass. Yeah. You dig? Well, well, here it didn't, right? So I'm like, give them, like, give them some game, right? Yeah. On... How they can avoid taking a bag and be self-sufficient. Because you managed to yeah. avoid all agendas, avoid a bag, mm -hmm. and just be self-sufficient. How can they do what you do and be self-sufficient and not be needy and greedy for the white man's bag? You have to be in a position where you have a base that trusts you. Yes. That's the main thing. I've been putting out products for over 20 years, man. Quality products, quality books, quality films. And people can trust that I'm going to do the right thing. Yeah. So I have a... a, a a strong base audience. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go to the dominant society with hat in hand because what they'll do is try to um, use you as a middleman to sell things to your base audience who's not really your base and they're going to be pulling the strings. Mm -hmm. And black folks are not dumb. We see when somebody's coming to us with an agenda. Not, so not you just, yeah, you just got to come at people with the realness and you just got to bring them quality products. You got to be 100 with them and that goes a long way. Yeah, because like I'll be real, man. Like you're probably the only person who I would trust and say, like, I right, if Tariq Reek is doing like a crowdfunding thing, yeah, for something, I right, bro, here, right? Because you've actually like delivered on each and every one, every single one, every single yeah. one, and mm -hmm. over delivered. And that's the thing, <laughs> yeah, and, fast. and fast. You did. Know? If I say I'm gonna do something quick, I always do it. We do it quick. We do it fast, and we give them. We overperform and we exceed all expectations, and that goes a long way. People can respect that. Yeah. You just got to be a person of your word, and that comes from some street shit. Because out here, you couldn't be running around here saying some shit and not being a person of your word. Somebody mm -hmm. blow your fucking head off out here with that dumb shit. Nah, that's a fact, mm -hmm. right? Right, right, right. But how do you have the time? Because you do like a thousand different other shit. Right? I do, I do, I do. How do you have the time to still like give these projects enough attention, attention right to where like? They're being done and fulfilled based on your vision. Um, because we need it, man. Because we need to have um, networks of other black people with the same mm -hmm. mindset of empowerment so that we can grow and build, especially for the next generation. So that's why I do these projects. Yeah. We just had a situation in Washington, D.C. We had a rally that, for reparations. We got that organized in like two or three weeks. Like 4,000 people showed up. Wow. Phenomenal turnout. We got a, 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 an event in Dallas coming up Memorial Day next year. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be the FBA Expo. We're mm -hmm. going to have a lot of black business people there showing their products, showing who they are so we can network with them nationwide. Yeah. We need to start networking with brothers and sisters because I go around the country, I see amazing brothers and sisters yeah. who run businesses and a lot of folks don't even know about them. Mm -hmm. So I like to have us networking with each other so that we can do business without having to grovel to the dominant society. Yeah. Um, how big, big, big like is your team? Um, I got a pretty good team. Uh, um, mm -hmm. I have different teams all over the country. My yeah. team here is pretty thorough. And I'm always bringing in new people, and we have volunteers. So when you're doing something progressive, people want to come in and just help. So I'm, I'm always Ooh. getting people who want to um, join in and help out. Ooh, like, uh, speak on that, though, right? So yeah. how do you vet people to know that, like, they're not coming in as an agent of chaos? Yeah, that's another thing. So yeah. you got to look at people's backgrounds. Mm. You got to see what they've done in the past, and you kind of have to... Um, work with some people, and that's a risk. Anytime you work with new people, it's yeah. a risk. That's what I, I've, I've been skeptical about working with new people, but yeah. I, unfortunately, you can't think like that yeah. because you might block out somebody who's thorough. So I've work with new people who were just completely thorough. I've worked with new people and I said, okay, I'm not working with that person again. Yeah. So it's a trial and error thing. Yeah. So you kind of test people and you kind of vet them and see how thorough they are when you bring them in. If they're doing what they're supposed to do and they're not being janky and they don't have some yeah. type of ulterior motive, you keep them on the team and you grow, you build and grow with them. Yeah. Now, what type of things though, what's up like, for example, if you go on, let's say, a, a potential partner or, or like a potential employee's yeah. 
Instagram or Twitter, like like what type of things like would you have to see to say, you know what, you're you're like you're disqualified? You know what, I, I had a dude um some years ago yeah. who's gonna build a pool at my house. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> white dude. Yeah. And he, he came, he was kind of cordial, yeah. but just a weird vibe from the dude. Yeah. And you know, we we I put down a little deposit. But I just got a weird vibe from mm -hmm. the dude. And then I let me let me look this guy up. I looked up, <laughs> yeah. looked the guy up, and this dude had Nazi tattoos oh, on his <laughs> stomach and shit. So I oh. fired his ass. <laughs> it, fast. Like, I fired. Yeah, I'm like, keep the deposit, my brother. Yeah. I'm good. But yeah, sometimes you just get a vibe. Yeah. And and sometimes when you start researching people, you just gotta let them bounce. You know? Yo, we just hit 400,000 subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out, click subscribe, get us to 500k. Yeah.